This is BQ. This is the Impact Lounge. This is the number one YouTube channel for the Positive Impact Wrestling fan. If you're looking for a home, troll free, hater free, Impact Lounge is the place to be. Hit that subscribe button. There was something Don Callis said when him and Scott D'Amour took over the company. And it was that Impact wasn't cool and that the goal was to make it cool. If I'm being honest, they were right. Now, us true fans enjoyed it and we found ways to be optimistic even when there wasn't much optimism to be had. But think about some of the stars on the roster of the last couple years. Now, I'm not dissing any of these people. Because a lot of these names that I'm going to name, I actually like. But think about this roster. Think about these guys. Tyrus, Rockstar Spud, Robbie E, Mahabali Shira, Babyface Drew Galloway, Shane Helms, Magnus, Chris Adonis, Laredo Kid, the watered-down version of the dollhouse after Taryn Terrell left, Jeremy Borash on commentary. What part... Of all that, says, man, Impact is a badass product. Let's turn it on. Now, a lot of those guys were good for what they did. Like Rockstar Spud, he was entertaining. He played his role to a T. But was he cool enough to bring new eyes and ears? Guys, two years ago, Slammiversary, the number one contenders for the tag titles were the Bromans. The second match on that card, and the opener, by the way, was X Division with Eddie Edwards in the X Division. But the second match of the card was Grado and Mahabali Shira versus Baron Dax and Basil Baraka. Now, both of those weren't bad matches. Decay versus Broman was, was actually my favorite match on the card. And even the other one wasn't bad. And they actually had a decent build, too, but... Compare that to Slammiversary that we watched last night. They would Those matches would have never made the card in 2018, and they wouldn't have given anybody a reason to order the pay-per-view. Now, in the past, they were signing guys with talent. Marche Rocket, Braxton Sutter, which Braxton was my favorite on the, on the roster. Uh, I, I don't usually follow the main event guys, whatever, you know, whatever company I'm following. I always like the, you know, the, the uh, underdogs. And I thought his heel work he was doing at the end was really, really good. I, I wish it got a chance. But, you know, Marche, Braxton, MJ Jenkins, Ava Story, Mario Bokara. Uh, you know, not necessarily characters that could work on TV and had drawing power and that you could put into a storyline. All of them talented. And, you know, I, I've talked to, you know, I've spoken to Marche Rocket. He's one of the nicest guys I ever met. Uh, I would love to see him back with the company. Ali was an anomaly because of the natural progression, but had they brought her in as Cherry Bomb, she wouldn't have lasted any longer than those names I just mentioned. You know, and just like we see right now with Brian Cage, how they're pushing that new, you know, era of X Division athlete, like that's what they tried to do with Marche, by the way, and they just did a bad job of it. They took a chance on Aaron Rex, and it worked for about three episodes. Then they put the Grand Championship on him. A very uncool title to most. And things went downhill. Jeff Jarrett brought a lot of optimism. After the whole thing with Billy Corgan. Most of us wanted Billy Corgan to take over. Felt like he had some good ideas. And he's showing that with NWA right now. But uh, you know. Dixie obviously sells the company. And there's no one less cool than Dixie. In the, in the wrestling world. <laughs> but Jeff Jarrett came in. He brought a lot of optimism. But my buddy Kyle said it best that they were trying to recreate, or Jeff, his, his, his vision was to recreate the TNA of old from the Spike TV days rather than something new and fresh. It makes you wonder, who, who is the target market? You know, Impact has been around long enough that there's, there's some young wrestling fans that know nothing about the drama of TNA. So why are you trying to take him back to that time? Instead of trying to appeal to this younger audience. This younger audience that didn't get to see the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era is why some people, you know, fell in love with WWE and still give it a chance at this day. 
Why not target those people? No matter what coat of paint you put on it, though, it was still a six-sided ring. It was still Orlando's impact zone. So it didn't matter who came in, whether it was management, wrestlers, creative. It was the still, still the same presentation in front of a quiet audience. So since then, they've changed the ring, changed the location, and people don't understand how important changing the side where the entrance ramp is and the camera angles are. Those give a completely different feel to where you don't think you're watching TNA anymore. You don't want it to feel like TNA. It was important to be willing to take the chance to move away from guys like EC3, Storm, Lashley. Yes, we love those guys, but what were they bringing as far as a new and fresh feel? What was Jeff Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy bringing as far as a new and fresh feel? Well, granted, there was the broken gimmick, and it ha- and the you know the the peak of that gimmick was when it wasn't as popular, and then when when you know people start getting on board, then it became comedy. But they had to be willing to let those guys go, who were attached to you know some of the stank of the TNA name, even if it wasn't their fault. And frankly, think about the current creative. EC3, uh, the Hardys, you know, shit, even taking it back to Angle a little bit. Those guys, they would not fit in what they're doing right now. Uh, maybe Storm could, maybe Lashley could, but a lot of these guys wouldn't be able to fit. So earlier I mentioned guys who weren't moving the needle. You bring them in for talent. But now look who they bring in. Guys who create buzz when they sign or you bring them over for, uh, you know, short-term deals. Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, Rich Swan, who I think Rich Swan is taking us back to the X Division of old. I really do. Sammy Callahan, Brian Cage, Tessa Blanchard, Sue Young, Joe Hendry. Working out a partnership with Lucha Underground was extremely key, and if they can do it with Ring of Honor New Japan like they'd like to, wow, will things really change. Because face it, those are cool companies in the eyes of most wrestling fans. I liked the Noah and Crash partnerships, but those seem to be like Jarrett deals at are over and done with, but I wouldn't mind if they revisited those. The Twitch and One Night Only shows have been a huge success. If you followed me from day one, a year ago, almost to the date, when they announced the Global Force Wrestling shows, you know, the ballpark shows, and when they came to New York, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but I said, and I like to think I have a good mind for this kind of stuff, I had said, if I were booking a house show for Impact, for TNA to get them back on the road, I would partner with small indie promotions who have established audiences and presence in those respective areas, work with their talent, and minimize logistic costs by not having to bring as many wrestlers on the road, and even, you know, maybe even using their rings to set up, and their co-branded shows that don't just say impact on them, and you reach out and touch those fans, because how many of you have become an even bigger fan of a wrestler after meeting them? You feel me on that? Now they're bringing the realism back. And I know this is a bold statement, but this is the closest thing we've seen to the Attitude Era in terms of presentation. I'm not saying it's going to reach that level of popularity. I'm just talking about the presentation. Slammiversary was nuts. Bound for Glory will be nuts. Folks, Impact is cool again. If you're hating, if you are trolling, you are fooling yourselves. You look and sound ridiculous this is the impact lounge hit the subscribe button and i'll talk to you guys soon peace